when you want to describe a large quantitative data set for example the achievement of students in mathematics in an entire school or the water flow in a river uh, throughout the year it's not really practical to list all the data points in the first case you'd be listing the grades of perhaps a thousand students and in the second you'll be listing 365 values of water flow and in any case even if you list them the data would be so big that it would not be understandable in this case we summarize the data by giving a few numbers that give the reader an idea about the, the scale or the value of the data and that's what we call summary statistics the first part of summary statistics is what we call measures of central tendency or measures of location that is a description of where the data points lie measures of location and these are usually known as the mean median and mode we'll, we will describe them in detail uh, in this in this lesson but I would like also to add another summary statistic which is the quartiles we'll describe each one in detail right now Consider if you have a data set made up of discrete data points. The mean, which is probably the most common uh, summary statistic used, it represents the equal distribution of the total. So for example, uh, let's say Basim earned money by working on weekends, on seven weekends, and this is the amount of money that he gained on every weekend what is his mean earning per weekend the symbol that we use is x bar and this represents a mean each one of those values is an x value so sigma x represents the sum of the x's yeah that is the sum of the earnings that he had during the seven weeks and n is the number of data points so this is equal to 12 plus 17 plus 23 plus 15 plus 19 plus 21 plus 19 and there are seven data points so this is divided by seven and you can work this out irrespective of the value that we get here it doesn't really matter but we know that the value is going to be somewhere between the minimum and the maximum so he earned a minimum of 12 and the maximum of 23 so obviously the mean income is going to have to be somewhere between 12 and 23 but mind you that the mean the mean might not be one of the data points so let's see let's do the calculations that's 12 plus 17 plus 23 plus 15 19 and that's divided by 7 so it's 18 so the mean is 18 and obviously 18 is not one of the data points but that doesn't matter now you might be saying that this is the average actually this is the way the average is described in every in everyday language but the word average is not a technical word in mathematics we would rather use the word mean now the median is the value that is exactly in the middle of the data it is the point above which there are as many data points as there are below it but in order to calculate the median 
you must you absolutely must arrange the data points in order whether it's descending or ascending so this is the set of data after being arranged in ascending order and we have seven data points how do we find the point that is in the middle we, there are seven points so we do seven plus one divided by two which is four so basically n plus one over two gives me the location of the median so that's the fourth data point one two three four and this is the median and the median equals 19 so be careful the location of the median is the fourth data point but its value is 19 now if we consider the quartile this data point is gone so there are three points above it and three points below it we ask ourselves consider the data that is below it how many points are there there are three so in this case n equals three and what is the point in the middle of course if you apply 3 plus 1 over 2 according to this rule you get 2 so you are effectively considering the median of the lower half and that gives you 15 we call this the lower quartile and in the same way you find that this is the upper quartile now quartiles divide the data in four parts a quarter is below the lower quartile and three quarters is above it and for the upper quartile three quarters of the data points are below it and one quarter quarter of the data is above it mind you that with a limited number of data points it's not exactly a quarter but with large um, data sets this becomes very, a very good indication of uh, where the quartiles lie and below each quartile there is a fixed number of quarters of the data points that's what we've just said now if we have a data set with 35 points to locate the median The median is at 35 plus 1 over 2 and that's 18 so you look at the 18th point and that is one part of the data so this is the 18th point and this is the middle of the data so there's if you take one point away which is the median that means that there are 34 points left there must be 17 points below the median and 17 points above the median so how do we find the quartiles the quartile is the median of the lower half that would give us the lower quartile and the median of the upper half that would give us the upper quartile and here 17 plus 1 over 2 is the ninth point so the ninth point would be the lower quartile and similarly if you count 9 from the top or from above the median you would also locate the upper quartile now what if the data is made up of an even number let's say 10 points as this case we apply the same rule the location of the median is at n plus 1 over 2 that's 10 plus 1 over 2 giving us 5.5 5. 
the 5.5th location is something between the 5th and the 6th location. So we count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is the point number 5. This is point number 6. So this is the median. That's how we divide the data. The median here does not pass through any of the points, but there are as many points above it, 5, as there are below it. So what is the median in this case? In this case, we say the median is 9 plus 11 over 2. It is simply the mean of the point below it and the point above it, and that will give us a median of 10. Now, sometimes you can identify the quartiles visually. Five data points, that gives me this point for the lower quartile. It divides this data set in half. And this is the upper quartile, and it divides this data set in half. If we have 11 points, let's do this visually now. There are 11 points. And obviously, because it's an odd number of points, uh, we, the median will be one of the data points. And this is the median. There are five points below it and five points above it. And if you look at the quartiles, the median of this part is the 8, and this is the lower quartile, and the median of this part is the 15. It divides this part in half, and this is the upper quartile. With 12 points, it's a little bit different. Uh, let's do this in detail. Location of the median is 12 plus 1 over 2, which is 13, over 2, which is 6.5. So we are looking at something between the 6th and the 7th. That's for the location. So the median is here. So the median is 11 plus 13 over 2, giving us 12. But again, we are left with an even number of points below the mean and below the median and above the median. Again, if we look at this half, there are six points, so there must be three points below the, the median and three points above it. So this would be the lower quartile. What is between 8 and 8? Well, obviously, it's 8. So the lower quartile equals 8. And if you look at this part of the data, there are 6 points. So the upper quartile must be between those two values. And they're different. So we take their mean, 21 plus 15 over 2. And that equals 18. That's your upper quartile. The mode is the easiest one to evaluate because the mode means that it is the value that is most repeated and it doesn't matter where it lies. In this case, 19 is repeated twice and every other point is repeated once. So this say, we say that the mode equals 19. Now what if we had another 23, for example, we would have two 19s and two 23s, we would say that the data is bimodal in the sense that it has two modes and the two modes would be 19 and 23. 
However, if there is yet another 23, there will be one mode which is the 23 because there are three of them compared to two of the 19s.